60 here. Okay, I've got some stuff in for my goblin. Um, so what I'm doing for my goblin 630, I'm going to be putting a um, YEP uh, 120M HV controller, or ESC. Um, it's got pretty big cables on it too. These are the um, cable lines to the motor. And they're pretty heavy duty, man. So um, I'm just going to measure up these uh, 10... 10 org cables and see what size fitting I'm going to use, whether I'm going to use these 4 miller line ones that usually run on a 600 helicopter, which I probably will use, or whether I want to go huge and go to the 6 mil. But I don't think I'm going to because it's way too big for what we're using. Um, so we'll be soldering those on, we'll be soldering a couple of battery terminals, and then I'm going to wire up the, uh, put some cabling on the um, my BEC voltage regulator. Um, I use that on my T-Rex 600 and it worked quite well so I'm going to continue using that. Got my new 550 to, 7, uh, 550 to 800 um, swash leveling tool. So that's all there, ready to go. I've got a couple of e EC3s that I'm going to use and I actually really like using the EC3 for the, on, on connecting the um, BEC basically because I did once forget to strap in my BEC battery and it flew out smacked into the blade one of the main blades and if it hadn't had these on it it actually would have come off but it actually it's held it held my soldering was good but it actually did not break the connection and I managed to land it without ordering it so it was great although the battery was a bit worse for wear but it was still good so yeah so um, I'm gonna pull this out of the bag I'm going to heat up my tip, get me solder, and I'm going to measure up these um, cables and see whether that whether a four mil is going to work. I'm just going to measure up these the actual size of this, just roughly. Yeah, about four mil. So four mil is going to work, work perfectly. So I've got a set of well, a couple of sets of four mil um, terminals here. Yes, yeah, so theoretically I should be able to, oh, maybe not. No, nah, that's not going to work, I'm going to have to use the 6 mils. I am going to have to use the 6 mils, because I just can't get these aligned ones on there. Nah, it's not going to work, so I'll use these 6 mils here, they're pretty, pretty big, but they'll do the job really nicely. Ah, oh, well that's unfortunate, never mind. These are back in their bag again. Okay, so these are XT 150s, so they're 150 amp. They'll handle up to, and they're a good little system because they've got really um, thick copper on the um, males, rather than the spring loaded, like the thin spring loaded ones, like you know this sort of thing on a little one there. Um, and what I like about them is they've got a little on the females anyway, they've got a chamfer on here so that you put, when you click them in you, you push them down into the fitting and then click, click it in so you solder it all out of place. So I just need to see whether the um, males are the same. No need for any heat shrink, uh, you know heat shrink or anything, they're really well insulated so it's awesome. Okay so let's get into it. Okay. So, we want um, our fitting, there's a female one, so the female one goes on the um, ESC itself, so you want all the females on this end. So because the battery has um, a couple of female, a female terminal coming out of the battery, you know, because you don't want the battery males hanging out and waving in and arcing out and things, so they'll have a female, so I'm actually going to put a black and red um, XT150 on here as well, um, a, a male one on each one and I'm going to put three females on this one, on this end here, so, so I'll get that set up and we'll get into it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to heat this up until I get a molten pool and I'm going to keep that pool molten. probably take a good minute or two. I don't know, it's taken less than that. So I'm going to fill this up 
and just keep heating it until it's almost to the top. So I've got a nice molten pool here of um, solder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as, as I still keep the heat on it, I'm going to sit this in. And it's going to rapidly cool it. See, not enough in there, so I'm going to put a bit more in. Fill it up a bit more. Right, so now I've got a nice molten pool there that's bubbling away, and all the flux is there. We'll get this unit, and we'll sit it over there. And I'm just going to put it in the hole. And I'm going to, the heat should rapidly travel up this. Yeah, I can feel it now. It's really hot on my fingertips. Really hot. So I'll just leave that to cool. Okay, so now all we've got to do is the battery terminals. So we'll get two females out for that. Ah, sorry, two males. So you want to make sure you get the males on here because the females always always go on the battery. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing. Put a bit of a tin on the end of that. Get it warm, get plenty of flux. Ah, solder okay there's a good pull there and it's actually boiling quite well you can see it's really getting hot the flux is starting to melt off so I'm going to sit this in here keeping my thumb about an inch from it from the actual weld site so that I can feel the heat transfer right up ok I can feel it at my thumb now it's getting real hot can't hold it there any longer and just release Let's give it a bit of a wipe off let it cool And remove it because you want to you get the maximum heat transfer when you get a real nice contact let's give it you know 15 10 15 seconds of a good face contact and it should start melting there we go Feed it in. Okay, 
takes a lot of a lot of um, solder because it's um, you know quite a big hole. So we'll stick this in. See, and that cooled it down right straight away. So it actually really soaked the heat up. So I didn't have real good contact on it. So we'll wait for that pull to form again. It's actually not getting good contact at all there. Starting to transfer back in the heat, as you can see. I'll wait till it's really going hard. And then I'll just start seeing some bubbles coming out of it soon. As the flux starts melting out, and we want to see that heat transfer right up into it. because it gets quite hot, really hot. Okay, and that's, that's it. So that'll be the first place it'll go if it's a bad soldering connection for, on, a, on a failure. So you want to spend the time make sure you get it right, otherwise it'll be... Um, a quick auto or a, <laughs> or a or worse okay so now when we want to put the connections on we've got the the, the male ones are smaller so we'll put them um, red with the red shouldn't be able to just click that into place I would think get a screwdriver all right a bit of a blooper here um, I've soldered all these terminals on and <laughs> you actually have to put these connectors on before the terminals because they actually taper the other way I thought they would snap in from the front so anyway so now I've got to unsolder them and um, do it again so I've got to heat this heat this back up again pull this off slide my connector over the top that way and then you pull it down and then snap it into place when it's cooled down so <laughs> uh, anyway I've never used these XT 150s before so a bit different so anyway it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes hopefully So we're going to slide this back over the top of here, right up to the edge, and then we're going to put it back in again. should sink down to the bottom that's it bit of blow cool clean my tip on the way in I'll let that cool off for a bit Whew, that's warm Okay, I'll wait till that cools down and then I'll start working on clicking the um, terminals back on. One of these connectors on and I'll just show you how the other one's done. 
but you basically pull this slide this down over the plastic I'll get my three mil um, driver push down grab it and click it into place and that's it They're pretty good you can get them out too by smacking them out the other way if you have a problem with them so anyway that's the two the two main battery feeds and that so they're pretty it's a pretty booty um, connector and as you can see safe air is well insulated 150 amps you'll run through that and you don't even run that even even the heat in my pliers is quite hot just from the soldering so I'm going to have to take these ones off from this end and do that oh I may not actually because it's tapered the other way I'm going to try one and see if I can get it on so I'm just going to put a red female one on the outside see what happens I'll try and push down on it from here. It's actually tapered from the far end, so that's it might actually go on the other way. We'll soon find out. Oh, careful not to take your finger off. That's it. So they click on from the outside, which is good because I didn't want to have to take these off. So that's perfect. So they're good actually. So just to try it. I'll just try one and the other. Perfect. Connects in perfectly. So I'll just put the blue one in the middle. Another female. So that slides over the top. Like so. Stick it in the hole. Like, uh, stick it on your flat surface. Careful not to take your thumb out because you will cut yourself and stab yourself really hard. Because you've got to push on it quite hard. Get it in there and snap it in and then same for your female black I'm, I'm glad so now I've figured it out the female ones you have to put on from the outside but the male ones have to go on from the inside so from on the cable so just a bit of a trick you've got to keep an eye on the tapers on these XT150 connectors it's tapered on the female ones so that they will slide in that way but the male ones are set up differently, they're tapered on the back side there, tapered on the back side so they're designed to push over the top that way so that was a bit of a trick I never never knew so again just use your screwdriver careful, very careful not to stab yourself because it will hurt, it really hurt and snap it in, that's it you've got perfect you don't have to worry about heat shrinking any of that and it looks really tidy um, and it's well insulated, it's perfect, like look how far inside those connectors they are, like two, three mil, four mil, and you know there's no way you're going to get any arcing out down this end, because it's just all well insulated in there, so they're really good connectors to use. So I'll be using this on my Goblin, on all my batteries from now on, I'll be running six mil, um, six mil stuff, because you need the heavier duty stuff when you're running the higher amp, I guess. Um, obviously if you're running 10 org you can't run 4 mil. So that's something I learnt today on the bigger gear. So there you go, that's um, just a bit of a, that's my ESC wired up. Ready to roll. So, so now I'm just going to work on the uh, BEC.